and see if you want to continue processing it. So if the data is not, is not of good quality, maybe you can immediately inform the, the department A like, hey, your data is shit, go and correct it. Okay. Uh, before we do any demo, uh, let's quickly uh, look through some quick code. So if you want to follow along uh, with the code base, um, the links are there. But um, I will just uh, focus on the main components of uh, the main, the more interesting portions. So for Google Cloud Functions, if you are not dealing with the HTTP stuff, uh, you kind of need to write some kind of function with the uh, two params, uh, data and context. So these data and context parameters, um, they contain a whole bunch of information that um, the event will provide. So let's say, let's say if you use Google Cloud Bucket uh, to notify Google Cloud Function, it will like, contain bucket name, when, when the file will drop into the bucket, those kind of stuff. So what is it? Um, the whole like structure of the data format is available in the web in the website. Okay, you can just check the documentation. Or an easy way is you can just log it out when you are first time trying it. Just log out and see what's inside. And then and then from there you can continue playing along with it. So this next section is kind of like the basic stuff. So basically um, uh, instantiating the uh, bucket, a uh, Google Cloud bucket to like, load up your config files. So in, in our case, um, when, uh, for our demo, we'll be using Slack to notify the bad department that your yeah, file is horrible. Um, and then we'll, be, like, send, uh, we'll send an initial, initial like, information that when you drop the bucket, uh, when you drop the file into the bucket, like, we have, uh, the compute will say, okay, we have received a CSV file and we will begin checking it. And in fact, you will like, tell the uh, on Slack that hey, your file is not good. So um, this part will, is the more um, is a more important thing to kind of know that. So for Google Cloud Functions, um, the, uh, when you try to run it and when you try to save files, you can only save it in the slash tmp folder. So because this whole Google Cloud Functions is essentially a read only read only um, file system like you can it it doesn't allow you to manipulate files except for the slash tmp uh, folder so if any like temporary file that you want to kind of manipulate you need to drop it there uh, so in our case let's say we have the cmp file drop the bucket we first want to download the file into our cloud function before we can load it up with panda to do a manipulation so after we load it up uh, after this part function like downloads the file from bucket, um, then it will run the check. So we have this like analytics check uh, dot run check, and it's basically just doing a check for whether this set of columns are below. So now I'm going to run a demo. Um, hopefully it works. Go on. Um, so I'm going to drop a set of files here. So this uh, GCF test analytics demo one. Um, then like all the stuff will appear, like the messages will all appear here. Okay, hold on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to upload the incorrect data set. And then that should ping. So on the initial uh, first time when you run the, the, the part, it will take a while because there's this thing called post start time. So essentially it takes a while for World Cloud function to from zero from a zero instance to jump to one. But after that, once you have code started, now you have started the function properly. Any function calls after that will be very, very faster. So um, if you are if you have been looking at the Google Cloud Function for a while, there is like whole like uh, debate about you know which cloud provider provides the smallest amount of code start. So like people don't want to like wait too long for this kind of stuff. 
So um, like just now I was mentioning about how like if I drop an incorrect CSV file, I just drop it into the bucket. That's all I did. Um, that will inform local functions to run this check, and then it says, okay, state column is missing. Okay, now the department really knows, okay, we have a state column missing, now we can go and correct it. So let's say we um, send the corrected data. So you send the correct data, and now you see the response way faster because the function has been warmed up. So yeah, now, now everything is good. Like, so we have done the first initial check of the whole pipeline. Okay. Okay, so next bit. So you see this um, red box there. Um, you will see that I put the indentation of the uh, storage clients into the main function. Because I know when they say Google Cloud function, you will only expect to run the stuff within the function. But if you check the documentation, this whole thing about performance where they say, um, use global variables if you want to reuse objects in the future or future invocations. So essentially what I could possibly do um, in order to reduce the amount of time to, uh, for future invocation is to put the instantiation of the Google Cloud Bucket clients outside of the function. So the moment when you first time when you run the code start, yeah, it will take a while. Yeah, you will like, instantiate all your clients and everything. But then from that moment on, when the function is warm enough, uh, that client can be reused over and over again. So that kind of reduces the amount of time for subsequent uh, function calls. Uh, and then there's this part about use dependencies wisely. So as, as you know, uh, uh, because let's say if you if you have a uh, that from Google Cloud Next, there's this uh, weird demo where they was uh, trying to show about how they wrote some Node.js code. And when you write some code, right, when you do your imports, you usually put the import at the top of the script, like you import whatever, and then after you write all your function calls after that. Uh, but because of that, you do your import, uh, you do all your heavy imports at the, uh, initially, and then you run your functions. But let's say if that, uh, some of your function only depends on, uh, okay, maybe, uh, like, okay, I'll, I'll say the point, like, that, the point that we completely, uh, sorry, just forget that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, but, but just one more, just one more thing, just, uh, for just a thing. Um, so, remember just now I was saying about the post and, uh, and when the whole thing or, uh, already kind of started, uh, when the post start, and then after that, when the function is already running, right? So essentially, uh, what actually happened for the two cloud functions? Once the, uh, the function started, the function is kind of running uh, from that moment on. Like Google doesn't slow down or slowly down immediately. So let's say if you have some kind of like file that you download, um, in order to prevent it from corrupting your temp folder, uh, you kind of have to clean up after you are done. So I was like, you know, it will affect future invocations of the function. Let's say for this case, if I, if, I, if I have this file and I download it into the temp function, uh, if I don't clean it up, it might, it might reuse the same file if I don't, uh, if I don't, don't do it right. Okay, so we are back to this diagram. Uh, report A will be report C, and then after that, uh, then to you know, the compile and everything. So we only, what we've done is only the uh, initial session with the report A and then uh, check if report A is okay. So that's all we have done so far. But we want to like you know go proceed on all the way to the uh, go through compilation step and uh, the like do the final check. So what could possibly do or what we could possibly do would be um, uh, we do the checks on uh, the reports from department A, B, and C, and once we have done the checks, we can uh, we can inform some kind of like we can store the state that you know we check these files, and once these files are checked, we can trigger another function to run the final compilation step. Okay, uh, yeah, that's what I was mentioning. So. 
So what we uh, what we've done with the uh, report A, report B, and report C, uh, we we uh, store that state into some kind of database, and then once we uh, once we are done with it, uh, the we can then trigger a sub part sub function, which will then run the final compilation step. Yeah. So I'll just skip to the demo. So this demo is essentially what I'm doing is I'm simulating like uh, the three departments. What the three departments will do is like each of the department will send the corrected uh, the correct data in, and then what happens after that is there will be three cloud functions that will check each of the uh, correct data, and once so, uh, once they are done checking, they will inform the task store that the this file has been checked and it's okay to be compiled. So once all three have been done, um, there will be a final part of the function which will then uh, say that, okay, once all three uh, files is okay, you can then uh, run the final like, compilation step, which will be triggered by Google Parks Okay, uh, let me run this demo. So I just sent three files uh, and they, I send them to another bucket. So I send them to this bucket. Um, oh, hold on. This bucket actually. Let me refresh it. So I put them into this folder, test one, test two, and test three to represent the three different departments. And within the department, you want that is the CFP file, that's correct data. So if you look back at the slack, so you know what the, the line that you see on top here? Uh, it's essentially, you need the first two cloud functions basically just do a simple check of like, hey, is this file okay? And if it's not okay, inform back the inform the uh, the department that did it, did the send over the wrong file uh, to go and redo it. The final the final uh, function is another function which is actually triggered by Google Hub Sub, uh, which is just basically in this case just. Uh, Count the number of rows uh, from each of the files and then just sum it up. So in this case, the CSV file in transfer only has one row. So uh, you just count them, that's the total number of rows in all that size is three. So it's just a simple example, but um, it can be expanded on further. Like you know, when you have all these um, when you have all these things uh, all triggered uh, based on events. So one is um, from bucket trigger it and trigger uh, send an event over to Google Cloud Functions to run uh, compute or even from Parks up to trigger Google Cloud Function. Okay, go back to slides. Okay, so like, let's say if you, you want to find out more about all these uh, functions, uh, about all these uh, de demos, um, you can check via the GitHub. Um, and also, if let's say you're interested in how to like deploy this Google Cloud functions in an automatic fashion or anything, so like uh, just now, um, I think John was mentioning about Google Cloud Build or something. So this set of functions were deployed within Google Cloud Build. So um, I have another like blog post that which kind of describes about how how you uh, can you can go about it to kind of do this automatic build to create all this uh, workflow. So um, yeah, the rest of the slides, um, there's just two more actually. Um, it's just basically informing about you know some of the uh, feature work that Google has installed. So there's this thing called Cloud Scheduler. Um, essentially, if you look at uh, the initial diagram, I uh, was showing you about the triggers. There is no trigger about um, triggering a function based on time. Like, but uh, for most of the cases, like. You kind of need, uh, let's say, you want to do daily reports and everything. Like you want to run this function at 4 p.m. every day. You can't do that right now. But now, um, like Google was saying that, okay, now you can use Google Cloud Scheduler to kind of trigger um, 
a Google Cloud function to do so. So I think currently you can help our beta stage right now. So if you want, you can like, find the link to go and apply for it. Uh, I don't have anything with me right now. And then there is one more thing. Uh, there's this thing called serverless containers. So yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a new thing. Um, so uh, just now I was mentioning about Google Cloud Functions. Google Cloud Functions is, uh, is based on the environment that Google provides. So in this case right now, uh, Google only provides Google Cloud Functions for Node.js and Python. And that's it. Um, I think if you see videos out there, there are Google Cloud, uh, there's potentially a Google Cloud Functions for Go, but I'm not sure when it's going to go out. I think it's currently maybe in help or better. Um, but this serverless container is actually a, it's a whole different piece. Um, it's actually, uh, let's say if you, want to, if you want to, if you have a Docker container, which you can put anything you want, like image magic or uh, Rust or something, you can put everything into a Docker container, pass it to Google, and tell Google to run on behalf. And it will be uh, run based, with, uh, with, based on how Google Cloud Functions kind of run, like, you know, paid based on how much you use. So, Save a lot of money if your own environment was safe. Yeah, so I'm still waiting for this. Um, hopefully, they come up with this soon. Okay, um, yeah, and that's the end for me. Okay, uh, any questions? Yeah, I Oops. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, your final step. Did data store trigger the workflow when uh, it met three rows or when it received three files? Okay, so in, in my case, essentially, uh, the last uh, the last step of the function, what it does is essentially it checks the data store whether the uh, the record say this file is passed, and when all all three records say this file uh, this file are passed, then it triggers a pops up. So how did the function know to check? Uh, it basically, like for each iteration, you'll keep checking. So oh, it, it's kind of something weird. But there's this thing called Google Cloud Firestore, which kind of, you basically, if you put the data point into this Firestore, it triggers, can you can trigger a Google Cloud function. So okay. that could be a possibility. But I, uh, for some odd reason, in the past, I went to um, activate Firestore uh, with. Uh, yeah, the Firestore the data store or something like that. It, it, it can't change the mode. So because of that, now the, the, the setting is permanent and I can't change back. <laughs> so I can't play around with that feature anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any other question? Is it uh, supporting for specific languages or it supports uh, multiple languages? You mean Google Cloud Functions? Cloud Functions. Cloud Functions currently supports Node.js 6, Node.js 8, and Python. Uh, Node.js 8 and Python is uh, beta, yeah, beta stage. Uh, the only one that is like, generally available is Node.js 6. Questions? Okay. Okay. No more announcements.